Welcome back, and in this lesson we are going to talk about the decimate modifier and how you can use it and what it's good for. Let's get started. So we're going to do file, new, and general, and we are in 2.91, and just do general if you're just opening up Blender, and let's pop on over into Eevee just to make it look a little more fresh. And let's go ahead and save the project. So we'll do file, save as, and we can just call it decimate. So let's go ahead and use Suzanne for this example today. And first, let's pop out her eyeball. So let's just go into edit mode, hover over her eye, hit L, and then hover over this eye and hit L. And that will select the linked geometry. And notice these eyes are just kind of hanging out there, floating in space. So just make sure you have them selected and then hit X and delete your vertices. And then we can select all of Suzanne with A and hit F to fill in the eyeballs. So now we have a manifold object. Um, just wanted to kind of clean it up because we're gonna do some decimating today. We're gonna decimate this model. And so to add the decimate modifier, just click on any object you want to decimate and go to add modifier in your modifiers panel here. And we're gonna do this one right here. It is decimate. And notice nothing really happens at first. And I'm gonna turn on my wireframe so you can kind of see what's happening here. So if you wanna turn yours on, just click on here, go there. And we can also add some information down here at the bottom. Usually it shows all the information, but in the new Blender 2.9, it does not. So you have to you know, check, turn, kind of turn on what you wanna see. So let's do scene statistics. And there we go, it should look like something like this. And notice we have about 400 faces total in this entire scene. And as we decimate or roll this ratio down, it's going to drop that dramatically. So notice we've created kind of like a low poly design and our face count has dropped dramatically. So this is a really easy, 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 fun way to take any design that you create or any design that you find online and quickly make it low poly. It's kind of like the easy man's low polyfy version to any design. Uh, it's very helpful. And so let's just crank that right on back up. Another cool thing you could do is turn on symmetry. So say if we have symmetry um, highlighted, Blender is going to make the, you know, as it's decimating, it's going to make both sides symmetrical depending on which of these buttons you have highlighted. So notice that the, you know, both sides of her face down this line here are symmetrical. Um, and if we turned it off, it's not really symmetrical. It's just trying to find the best way to lower the poly count as best it can. But if you turn this on, it will kind of lock it to make sure everything stays nice and even. Uh, you can also do the Y or the Z, and you can also uh, triangulate, and that will just kind of take some of the geometry that's kind of uh, bending uh, really, really far and just try and, you know, chop it up and make it a little easier for your slicing software. So you can, I don't really ever do that, but if you need to, uh, you know, that will just triangulate any of your quads that you have um, on your faces here. Another really awesome thing that you can do is decimate only the certain edges or vertices or lines that you want. So say if in this object, we only wanted to decimate half of the face, you know, so let's turn our symmetry and triangulate off and say we just wanted to decimate, you know, half of the design or just a single part of your design. All you have to do is go into edit mode and select whichever uh, edges or points that you want to, to um, affect. I'm going to go into front view and just select maybe just half of her face here. And I did that in see-through mode. So everything is selected just like this. And what we can do is create a vertex group of just these edges. So to do that, you just hit control G and that will assign a vertex group uh, right here. So if we click on that, bloop, what happens is it created this little group here. So we can call this like Suzanne face half, you know, anything you want. It doesn't matter what you name it here. Just as something you can remember and it's already been assigned. So if we deselect everything with Alt A and we come over here, we can, you know, kind of select, um, you know, whichever vertex group we have highlighted, we can kind of see what we have selected. 
And so if we now go back into our modifier here, we can um, take our vertex group and with our vertex group, select our group we just made, Suzanne face half, boop. And nothing's happening because we're in edit mode. So if we tab back over into object mode, notice it's been decimated pretty, pretty intensely. So let's crank that up a little bit. Notice here, okay, cool. So we got something going here. We've got kind of a low poly, you know, half of the face going on there. But let's say we wanted to, you know, maybe I want to decimate some of the ear as well. Maybe that needs some decimating. Uh, then you can tab back over, highlight another part of your, your design here, go to your vertex group, and you could assign that to this group. Or you could just, again, hit Control G, and you could assign it to the active group there. Bloop. And so if we go back into object mode, notice the, um, you know, this half of the face is decimated and so is this ear. So it gives you a lot of control over your designs. And another, and another instance where you would use the decimate is, uh, let's say you have a, a photogrammetry scan or a sculpt or a design that is really, really large, like the file size is really large and it's really heavy on your slicer, or you're working on a design and it's really bogging down your computer because you have tons of faces, um, you can use the decimate modifier just to lighten the load on Blender. Um, it's very helpful. So let me show you an example of that. Let's just clear off this uh, decimate modifier and let's add a subdivision surface. And that's just gonna add uh, make it a lot more curvy. So just add subdivision surface and just crank that up to like maybe like four. And then I want you to do control A to apply it or just you know hit that little drop down and hit apply. And so notice we've got tons and tons and tons of geometry. There are over a hundred thousand faces on the Suzanne now. So in this case, you know, sometimes you may want to add a decimate um, to your modifier stack here. So to do that, we could just go to decimate and notice that when I drop this down, uh, sometimes it really doesn't affect the overall look of your design. You still get the exact same look, but you don't have as much geometry or file size. Um, and it just makes it a lot lighter uh, for Blender to process your, your, your objects here. So my go-to is usually 0.1 on the ratio. And you can see here, you know, we've kind of got the same look of our Suzanne, but a fraction of the size. So even if I turn off the overlays and we toggle this decimate modifier on and off with this little screen here, you can't really even tell that much of a difference. The only thing you can really see is when you turn this off. No, you can't. It really doesn't it's kind of almost impossible to see. So, you know, it's smooth. It does kind of make it look a little bit more, I call it like dragon scales. See this little texture here, but that really doesn't show up on your 3D prints that much, unless you're using like an SLA, like, you know, super high definition printer. Uh, most of the time it's not even gonna really show up. Uh, you can even go even further, like 0 0.05 or 0 0.01, you know, and really start to, you know, that's showing up a little bit more. But if you're just trying to get, you know, lower your, your file size or make it a little less heavy, you can do like 0.1 or even 0.3. That's a good go-to. And then just check your wireframe, you know, and just kind of look at uh, how how far do you really want to push uh, that, that geometry. So I use the decimate all the time. Um, another instance you could do, say if you had like five or six different modifiers and Blender's starting to bog down, you could just throw a decimate at the bottom of your modifier stack and that's going to help tremendously uh, when doing your designs. So another thing that you may notice on the decimate modifier is that there are different modes. So most of the time you're going to just stay on collapse. That's the most common, but there are a few others like the unsubdivide, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's literally the opposite of subdivision. So if subdivision makes things smoother looking, unsubdivide does the opposite. It makes it more blocky looking. And the iterations are actually in pairs. So for example, if you had um, two levels of subdivision, you would need four levels of unsubdivide to 
essentially get back to where he started. Uh, so again, if we had three levels of subdivision, we would need six. So notice if I just did five, it looks very weird. It's actually kind of a cool look, um, but to you know reverse that, uh, you would do six. So that is the unsubdivide. So say if you had something that you wanted to look more like you know, a lower poly count, then you could use unsubdivide. Another one you can use is planar. And what that is doing is anywhere that there are flat planes, um, it's not gonna decimate that. Um, it'll just kind of focus on the edges. And if we slide this little guy out here, and so the angle limit is going to depend on, you know, what type of, you know, how far of the angle you want Blender to, you know, kind of ignore. So, so this is only going to dissolve um, angles that are below this value here. Um, you can also do limits on the normals, depending on the face directions. You can do it on materials. So say if you had different colors on Suzanne, around the edges of those materials, um, it won't decimate them. Or if you had seams, so say if you were doing some UV or textures um, on Suzanne, that's more for like animation and CG, but uh, you know that would be for the seams. It wouldn't decimate where the seams are. And then you also have sharp, which is going to limit the decimating along sharp edges or sharp angles. And you've also got UVs, which is going to limit the decimation on the UV coordinates. And you can also do all boundaries. And when this is enabled, all the vertices along the boundary of your faces are dissolved, and it can give you a better result if you're using a higher angle limit. So even that looks pretty cool. It kind of looks more like kind of futuristic and space agey. Um, so that's just, I just kind of want to show you the different modes, but most of the time, nine out of 10 times, you're just going to leave it on collapse. Uh, but just want to show you those in case it sparks some new ideas for you. That is how I use the decimate modifier. I use it pretty much in every single project I do inside of Blender, especially if I'm doing photogametry or sculpting. So, you know, add that to your tool belt and decimate some stuff. Let's go ahead and jump into the next design.